electronic bills uh, or potentially sending out uh, texts or emails for people that sign up to this that notifies them, hey, your bill's ready. Um, we have not got the dollar figures on how much that's going to cost to do that. We will hopefully have that information tomorrow, and I'll supplement that to you as soon as I have it. Um, so we can move forward on that or bring it to the board for discussion if it's a substantial amount. Um, that's all the extra stuff I have. Um, if there are any questions, I'll certainly try to answer them. Alderman Chevrolet. Uh, thank you. All right, so now that we have, you know, you have all these slides here, is there a way we can wrap, put that into like a little package um, to put on the website that instructs people how to go sign up? Because some of the complaints I've heard is they, they can't understand understand the website so I mean it does seem simple but I mean maybe just having like a some kind of a job aid or something and help. and yeah ultimately um, I'll I, the answer is yes we can but we does not include me um, I, I'll have to talk to somebody who knows how to do that stuff um, I would assume that can be done I went through it based upon the concern that it's hard to sign up um, and I will indicate that if you do not have your account number and your account balance, you have to, you have to get that information to be able to add your account. Um, but other than that, it was pretty straightforward. You can do it from your phone or your website, but I will, I will look at, um, I don't know exactly how, whether it would be similar to a, a motion in action slideshow that gives you a, here's where you do it and here's where you here's next I I don't know um, I just when I looked at it I I was trying to find the difficulty and we'll have somebody if, yeah, I, mean, I agree I mean it's it seems pretty simple I mean but I mean right. it's just yeah it's and, some of the complaints and ultimately that they don't it. Um, I will indicate that one of our financial services um, clerks was uh, in I asked her a lot of the questions today um, she did have a phone call today um, for the walkthrough on how to do it um, and giving the instructions while the person was not able to do it um, at the time and uh, the lady promised to call back if she had any problems and haven't heard anything and the bill's been paid so um, ultimately I, I agree with your assessment I just I, finding out how to make it simpler is going to be difficult for me but we'll we'll look at it in your uh, detail here, <clears throat> in which one do you include those that sign up for auto debit? Is that included in there? That uh, no, no, the auto debit, there are 2,000 and some bills that, uh, payments that are not included in that. Um, the ones that are not included are anybody that dropped it in the mail, anybody that's on auto debit, and anybody that dropped it in the box out front. Um, or if they called in if it's a phone call to pay over the phone with a credit card. Um, and there were, as I recall, 2,100 and some odd uh, of those in the last month for the payments. Very good. Any other questions for Mr. Hendricks? All right, let's move on. Um, next item business is item number seven in the agenda. Alderman Chevalier. Thank you. I move to approve bill number 2785-18, Waters and Sewers, for second reading. Second. Second. Alderman Moore. Any discussion? Clerk, please call roll. Alderman Arnold? Yes. Aye. Alderman Chevalier? Aye. Alderman Moore? Aye. Alderman Wilson? Aye. Alderman Booth? Aye. Alderman Lowe? No. Motion carries. Mr. Hendricks, will you please read the bill? An ordinance amending section 705110 of the Code of Ordinances of the City of Smithville. Thank you. Uh, item number eight on the agenda. Alderman Booth. Move to approve bill number 2786 18, amending chapter 105 of the Municipal Code for its first reading. Second. Second by Alderman Moore. Any discussion? I'd like to make some some corrections, so I need to do some amendments okay. to it. You can, if you would like, you can amend it. You could probably put all those corrections in one amendment yes. if you would like. Okay. So On page. You you need to move to amend it first, so we have a second. Okay. I move to amend 
the amending of Chapter 105 of the Municipal Code. Second. And then state the changes, then we'll get a second. The changes that need to be made are on page 29 in uh, section 8, next to last row. It has, as he may deem necessary, since we were changing everything to he, she, we need to add she to that one. Number 10, uh, the second line where it says any department of the city under his jurisdiction probably be, ought to be his, her jurisdiction. Then on page 30, <clears throat> under the section 105.040, the first line where it says his office probably should say her, his office. And those are the corrections. Very good. I will now need a second for the amended motion. Second. second. Alder Booth seconds. Any further discussion on the amend on the amendment? All in favor of adopting the amendment to the main motion, as Alderwoman Wilson has indicated, please say aye. 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 Oh, we actually have to. It, it is an ordinance, so we have to have a roll call. So. Okay. Clerk, will you please call roll? This is for the amendment to the main motion. Alderman Walker? Aye. Alderman Booth? Aye. Alderman Wilson? Aye. Alderman Moore? Aye. Alderman Chevalier? Aye. Alderman Arnold? Aye. Aye. Six zero. Motion carries. So the amendment the amendment carries. Now we're back to the main motion. Any further discussion on the main motion? Aye. Clerk, please call roll. Alderman Moore? Aye. Alderman Chevalier? Aye. Alderman Arnold? Aye. Alderman Lunker? Aye. Alderman Booth? Aye. Alderman Moore? Aye. Alderman Aye. 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 Motion carries. Mr. Hendricks, will you please read the bill? An ordinance amending section 105 of the Code of Ordinances of the City of Smithville. Thank you. The second reading on that will come up in two weeks or at our next board meeting. Uh, agenda item number nine, Alderman Booth. Move to approve bill number 2787-18, amending chapter of the code pertaining to the EDC. Second. Second by Alderwoman Wilson. Any discussion? Alderman Blomker, is there anything you want to add to that? Um, no, happy to answer questions on this. As I said, this largely provides bylaws um, largely borrowed from the Planning and Zoning Committee, so sets up uh, chairman elections, appointment of folks, and sets up what happens if the chairman's not there and someone else needs to run the meeting. So all important things to be able to get a meeting taken care of. Very good. I want to compliment the EDC for working on that. I think that's important to understand who does what when. So very good. Any, any further discussion? Clerk, please call roll. Alderman Wilson? Aye. Alderman Booth? Aye. Alderman Lunker? Aye. Alderman Moore? Aye. Alderman Chevalier? Aye. Alderman Arnold? Aye. 6-0. Motion carries. Mr. Hendricks, would you please read the bill? An ordinance amending the Code of Ordinances pertaining to the Economic Development Committee. Very good. Now we are going to go to Resolution 559, which was in the consent agenda. Uh, I need a motion for that. Alderman Booth. Move to approve Resolution 559, Settlement Agreement. Second. Second by Alderman Moore. Discussion. I move to make an amendment to Resolution 559 in the fourth whereas need to add the word to, so it reads, to avoid litigation costs and to resolve this issue, the city has agreed to resolve this arrangement. Second. Second to the amendment. Any further discussion? All in favor of approving resolution 559, no, of approving the amendment to resolution 559, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Any further discussion on Resolution 559 to the main motion? All in favor of approving Resolution 559 as amended, please say aye. 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 Any opposed, please say no. No. Oh. Division? 
Actually, eyes have it. Motion carries. That's ultimately up to you. If you yes. can count that there was four to two, then you can count four yes. to two. <laughs> Sometimes I'm not listening for things that I can, if I'm not expecting something, I don't necessarily listen for it. So, all right. Uh, next item, resolution new street names. Do I hear a motion? Actually, this will go, th we have six motion uh, resolutions here, so we will go through the first uh, uh, section 10 printed uh, subsection A on resolution 560. Alderman Blomker? I move to approve resolution 560. A second. Okay. Second by Alderman Moore. Any discussion? All in favor of approving resolution 560, renaming 169 Spur to North Bridge Street, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Please say no. Motion carries. Item B, Resolution 561. Alderman Moore. I move to approve Resolution 561, Bridge Street, Woodland Court to Hilltop Street. Second. Second by Alderman Booth. Discussion. All in favor of approving Resolution 561, renaming Bridge Street, Woodland Court to Hilltop Street, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Please say no. Motion carries. Resolution 562. Alderman Moore. I move to approve Resolution 562, First Street between 169 and Spur to East 2nd Street. Second. Second. Second by Alderwoman Wilson. Any discussion? All in favor of approving Resolution 562, renaming 1st Street between 169 and Spur to East 2nd Street, please say aye. 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 Any, any opposed? Please say no. Motion carries. Resolution 563. Alderman Booth. Move to approve Resolution 563, F Highway between Spur and Maple to East 1st Street. Second. Second by Alderwoman Wilson. Any discussion? Alderman Chevalier. Yes, I move to amend Resolution 563 to um, state F Highway between Spur and Maple to Old Rock Way. <laughs> there has been an amendment. Do I have a second? Motion fails, Alderman <laughs> Chevalier. <laughs> uh, any further discussion? All in favor of approving Resolution 563, renaming F Highway between Spur and Maple to East 1st Street, please say aye. 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 Any opposed, please say no. <laughs> Motion carries. <laughs> um, for the audience, sometimes this behavior by the alderman goes on far too often. <laughs> <laughs> Resolution 564, Alderman Blomker. I move to approve Resolution 564, renaming F Highway between Maple and Pope Lane to Spellman Drive. Second. Second, Alderman Moore. Any discussion? All in favor of approving Resolution 564, renaming F Highway between Maple and Pope Lane to Spellman Drive, please say aye. 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 Any opposed, please say no. <coughs> Motion carries. Resolution 565, Alderman Booth. Move to approve Resolution 565, uh, F Highway between Pope Lane and Linton Way to Northeast 172nd Street. Second. Second by Alderman Moore. <clears throat> Any discussion? All in favor of approving Resolution 565, renaming F Highway between Pope Lane and Linton Way to Northeast 172nd Street, please say aye. 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 Any opposed, please say no. Motion carries. <coughs> Item number 11. Alderman Booth. Move to approve Resolution 566, amendment to authorization number 80 with HDR. Second. Second by Alderman Moore. <coughs> Any discussion? All in favor of approving Resolution 566, uh, amendment to authorization number 80 with HDR, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Please say no. Motion carries. 
Agenda item number 12, resolution 567. Alderman Arnold. Second. Second by Alderwoman Wilson. Any discussion? All in favor of approving resolution 567, awarding contract for street department truck purchase, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Please say no. Motion carries. Resolution 568. Alderman Booth. Move to approve resolution 568, amending the schedule of fees. Second. Second. Alderman Moore. Any discussion? All those in favor of approving resolution 568, amending the schedule of fees, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Please say no. Motion carries. Thank you. Matters before the board. Um, we have public comment. We have uh, two items on for public comment. First, we'll hear from Mr. Joshua M. Collins. If you'll come forward and state your name and your address for the record and address the Board of Aldermen. Sure, thank you. I appreciate it, uh, Mayor and Board members. Thanks for having me here. Uh, I'm Joshua Collins. I am with Coalition Against Bigger Trucks. Uh, my address is 3178 North Broadway Street. I live in the great city of Chicago, and I am here um, in Northwest Missouri talking to several local governments about some of the work that we are doing in terms of trying to make sure that truck sizes and weights pretty much stay where they are. Um, just wanted to kind of clarify a little bit of, of the work we do. Coalition Against Bigger Trucks is not coalition against the trucking industry or truck drivers or anything of that nature. The work we do is simply to keep truck sizes and weights where they are right now. Uh, we're a national nonprofit. We work across the country. There are seven of us that cover the entire country. Uh, we don't have any lobbyists or anything. What we do is do grassroots work. We come out, we meet with law enforcement, local government, county engineers, public works officials, because the work that we do is very much based on two principles. First of all, talking about safety and the impact that heavier and bigger trucks would have um, on public safety. On the other hand, we also talk about uh, damage to infrastructure and the impact that would have. Um, I'm going to try to compact this into three minutes. There's a, a quite a bit to talk about, but um, you, just, you, you may take longer than three minutes if you need to. You want me to add on two more minutes? Yes. <laughs> okay, gotcha. Well, just to give you a little bit of background about what we're looking at here and how this factors into local government. Uh, back in 2015, there was an attempt at the federal level uh, to do one broad sweeping legislative package that would have taken the federal uh, maximum on 18-wheel trucks from 80,000 pounds to 91,000 pounds. Um, that was shot down in 2015 in Congress. And immediately after that, Congress asked the uh, Federal Department of Transportation to do a study on what the impact would be of having 91,000 pound trucks all across the country, carte blanche, not just uh, you know agricultural industry or, or coal or, or particular uh, industries. This would be any truck, one come one come all. Uh, that study was finished up about a year ago. Uh, most of what was found by the Department of Transportation probably wouldn't surprise you. Uh, I think the, the most important part, and what I'd like to talk about with local governments, uh, is damage to infrastructure. Uh, the one thing they found in this study, um, they were looking at the impact on bridges. Keep in mind, they were only looking at uh, federally funded bridges. So we're talking about bridges on your interstates bridges on your U.S. highways, bridges that are built to heavier specifications that can really, you know, take a large amount of truck weight. They found that 5,000 bridges throughout the U.S. Uh, would be negatively affected, with price tag of about $1.1 billion um, in additional uh, repair. If we were to extrapolate and look at uh, bridges that are under uh, state or local supervision across the country, I would expect that number would, would balloon. Those bridges tend to be much older, and they were built before the days that we ever thought we would have to deal with even 80,000 pound trucks. Um, so that study came out, and the recommendation to Congress was we are in no position uh, to raise the truck weights or truck sizes for that. So the proponents of bigger trucks uh, have taken a new tack, a new strategy, which uh, I would do as well. Uh, the thought here is let's try to do this on a state-by-state -state basis. 
Because states are allowed to adjust their uh, maximum weight, federal government says you have to allow at least 80,000 pounds. You can't go below that, uh, but you can raise it to whatever maximum you might want. Some states have done that. Um, one thing that's being discussed uh, recently is uh, the concept of a 15-year pilot project. Now, in my estimation, 15 years isn't really a pilot project uh, for something that would put another five and a half tons on the road. That's the reason we're here in Missouri. We're talking to you know, local governments around the state. Uh, we are expecting legislation to come up in Jefferson City uh, probably within the next couple months. There's no bill assigned yet, um, and that is on purpose. Uh, if you put a bill number out there and you put the specifics out there, um, it's uh, very easy to attract attention to it. Not a very popular bill. Um, what our organization tries to do is to try to create some awareness, uh, particularly in this instance with state legislators, state senators, and that sort of thing, just to let them know what the negative impacts might be. I talked about infrastructure. Let me throw a few uh, bullet points at you on safety. Department of Transportation went into a handful of states where they already allowed heavier trucks. Uh, they went to one state that had 91,000 pounds, it was Washington State. On the other end of the scale, they went to Michigan who allow some of the heaviest trucks in the U.S. I, I don't know the exact number, but I think it's around 140,000 pounds. Their roads show it as well. Um, what they found would not surprise you. Uh, crash rates when you compare trucks over the 80,000 pound standard to trucks at or below uh, were through the roof. It was 47% higher in Washington State, 300% higher in Michigan, and a lot of that is due to um, some of the mechanisms that occur when you have extra weight on. 18-wheel trucks. Uh, there is uh, increased stopping distance, for instance. Uh, braking and out-of-service violations kind of go through the roof. And just for those of you that don't know what an out-of-service violation is, this is something that can get a truck shut down on the side of the interstate. They can't even drive it into town. It needs to be towed into town uh, to have the proper modifications. Um, Out-of-service violations are huge. They lead to very bad accidents because they're usually concerning brakes, tires, suspension, that sort of thing. Just to kind of wrap this up for you, basically what we are looking for in partners with local government and law enforcement uh, is to do outreach. Outreach to the congressional delegation and to uh, the state delegation as well, particularly in the event that this is going to come up, kind of expressing some of those concerns. Uh, and the way we do that is very traditional and old-fashioned. It's through letters, calls, and emails. It has been successful. Um, you know, when you're pushing back against uh, uh, billion-dollar corporations that want this stuff, and there's seven of you that cover the entire country, um, sometimes that's the best you can do. But part of what we do is uh, bring up awareness. Most people don't even know this is going on. Uh, it's not one of the most exciting issues in the world, but what it does have an impact on um, our roads and bridges and safety. Uh, one last point, uh, you know, a lot of people, when, when they think about tractor trailers, they think of them being creatures of the interstate, right? That's where we see them the most. That's where we feel the most affected. We all know that there's no trip, though, by an 18-wheeler that starts and ends on the interstate. In fact, you know, they have to make deliveries. They come off for gas, food, lodging, that sort of thing. Um, and also, in the age of GPS, where everything is driven by, you know, whatever your Garmin says, a lot of times that Garmin, if it knows it can save a minute, it's going to shoot you down a local road that that truck shouldn't even be on. Um, I was just coming over on, on one of the, the letter routes. I was coming from Clinton County, um, and I crossed a bridge that said it had a 90-ton um, uh, uh, restriction. So, or a 90,000 pound restriction. If we go up to 91,000 pounds, and these are MoDOT roads, by the way, if we go up to 90,000, 91,000 pounds, we're already over that. Um, and with, you know, there being a short supply of, of money for uh, repair, replacement, that sort of thing, uh, you know, I think it's pretty important that we get that, get that message out there. So my overall request is, uh, you know, for you, Mayor, and, and uh, the board to take a look at a, a letter that we would do, um, you know, that would go to the delegation and give that some consideration. Any questions? Sorry, I know that was about six minutes. I have a booth. Yeah, I got a question. I was go, trying to go through a lot of this information right here on the spot. Um, there's a lot of stats in here. The one thing I didn't see, and I'm not saying I'm for or against what you're trying to do, but 
Um, was there a study indicating when you increase the truck size that it reduces the amount of trucks? So that's that's a kind. Of, if I if I am the guy to here telling you why uh, heavier trucks would be better, that's one of the things I'm going to say. We hear that a lot. What you kind of have to think about is the market economics of what happens, though. So if you get heavier trucks, let's say you get 91, 97,000 pounds. Those two have been proposed before. Suddenly, trucking becomes much, much cheaper than other modes of shipping, rail, water, air, whatever it might be. So in theory, yes, there would be less trucks right, if you had heavier more. trucks. But what actually happens is, because that becomes much cheaper, suddenly a bunch of shippers that are using rail say, I don't want to use rail anymore. Too expensive. Take it out. Put it, you know, put it on a truck. I want to do that. That's what everybody else is doing. Then you got more trucks on the road. Because if you, have an, if you have a constant amount of shipping going through and you're diverting that from rail or air or whatever it might be, you're actually looking at more truck traffic. Even though you know, they can carry more, there's going to be more coming off. So that's, you know, that's sort of the, the bounce back on that. Does that make sense? Yeah, it makes sense. Thank you. Very good. Any, any other questions for Mr. Paul? All right. Josh, thank you, so thank you very much. I and, appreciate it. And uh, I'd like to visit with you for a couple minutes on a couple yes, more sir. ideas after the meeting. Absolutely. Very good. Thank you. Thank you much. Next uh, public comment, John Gertner. John, if you'll state your name and address for the record. John Gertner, 18106F. I've got two things. One, after these gas lines were put in, some of us are still have damage in our front yards and plants that have been tore out and some that have been damaged and haven't been replaced. When, when are they going to fix that? When it's not in the middle of winter. They'll do it in the spring. So we, we do have till spring and they're going to come back and... Yeah, they have to come back per the permit we issued them. Okay, because I mean we have some ruts that they left in some of these yards that are bad. Now, one, one of the requirements now, it's done by a utility company, by their contractors, but one of the requirements, as Mr. Hendricks mentioned, per the permit, is that they have to um, leave after they're done, it has to be restored to what it was like before that. So if there are ruts, huge dirt clods, not cleaned up properly, grades been changed, et cetera, et cetera, that all has to be restored to I the just, I just want to make sure they weren't putting the gas lines and said, we fixed it and we're gone. Yeah, well, the utilities are ultimately responsible for having their contractors do that or take care of it themselves. But anyway, that's part of the permit process, so that will be done. So in the spring, because they don't know they tore out three of my shrubs and did something to the other neighbor's yard, do we contact City Hall? Dennis Witt. Dennis Witt. Yep, he's our code enforcement right, cool. inspector. Okay. My other thing is I'm back about the, uh, the drainage ditch going through my yard. I, I really didn't realize how much the board does until I started really paying attention to City Hall, so I know you do give a lot of time to the city, but I've, no one has been out to my place to see what I'm talking about. So I'm asking, and not while it's cold, if the aldermen, some of you would be willing to come out and see my situation. You know, I'm still waiting for the thing with the lawyer. You know, I got the letter, but we both agreed that what was on that letter wasn't relative to what I had. Um, I'm not sure anybody necessarily agreed to that. We, we did. So I, I asked, I requested to speak with him because all the stuff that was on there is what Steve was talking about. Grand Steve's gone, but it was all about Porter Road and you know what, you know the damage from that. I didn't even address that. I just the water coming down. I said either that or why don't we just seal off the culvert? Just seal off the culvert. I have nothing to complain about. Um, we would have to check with staff in our legal department to see if that's something we can do. But certainly, I don't know if that could even be an option, but we would... We that would cause liability on the city. Yeah. It would cause then everything behind the culvert. And a dam. Yeah. yeah. It would create a dam effect. John, can you come to City Hall tomorrow? Sometime in the day? Well, I work during the day. What time do you uh, get off? I've been getting off at right around 4. If you come sometime between four and six, I'll be here. All right. You and I can talk. All right. And uh, other than that, if I'm still, like I said, I know you guys do a lot, but I'm still requesting that 
and discuss it in your meet, your next alderman, whatever you call that, when you discuss what happened here. Work session. That's it. If you could figure out if some of you want to come. I know only three of you can, but if one of you wants to, I, I think you'd have a changed opinion if you could see what I have. Thank you. Thank you, John. Very good. Um, item number 14. Um, before we, we talk about this, there was one thing I forgot to mention during my, during my mayor's report. Currently, we are meeting in a work session one day a month. Uh, we plan to continue that for now. However, I do have a conflict on Monday evenings, and I would like to propose to the board if we can't change that second or that work session to be on the Thursday of the week between board meetings. That would allow me to be here on a regular basis at that time, and that would be then uh, the weeks between board meetings. I discussed that with staff to make sure that that would give them enough time. And if there are changes made that need to be brought up at the next alderman meeting, the packets do go out on Thursdays. On those Thursdays, we would have that work session, which would be one Thursday a month. We would not send the packets out until it's been, uh, until we have the items from the work session that need to be on, uh, on the regular agenda for the regular session. Does that make sense? So you're proposing instead of next Monday, do it next Thursday? Yes. I can't make it on that, that Thursday. I've already got that much. Actually, you know what? This Monday will be fine for me. But thereafter, if it would be okay, would it be okay with the board if we went to the Thursday of the week between board meetings? So it would be the third Thursday of every month? Not always possibly. Usually it'll be the third Thursday, but just it'll be, it'll be the Thursday of the week between our board meetings. Between the second and fourth Tuesdays, that could vary. Or yeah, yes, right. the first and third Tuesdays, it'd right. be the first, yeah. yeah. We talked about this, trying to figure out the wording to put it on, but yes. ultimately, yeah. Yes. I know I have a conflict that evening. Every Thursday or? Uh, that, Thursday. that Thursday. Oh, you mean next week? Yeah. Or on a? The on Thursday a that would normally fall. Yeah. I'd say uh, most Thursdays I'm going to have conflicts as well. I mean, my, that's the day all the kids do sports tell you what, in high school. We'll discuss that on Monday at a work session. How's that? <laughs> Just All right. Just anyway, um, think about that because, again, I, I really would like to be here for the work sessions. So, all right. That's all I have. Any uh, new business from the floor? Alderman Blomker. I'd have three items I'd like to add to a work session at some point. Um, one, a discussion on our, uh, our social media policy. Okay. Um, two, uh, in light of the information we had on uh, the water billing, uh, a discussion on the water billing cycle and given that information and see what we can do to try to resolve that situation for I know we have several residents who that continues to be an issue for and third I believe we are reviewing the parks department at our next yes uh, they're on the um, agenda uh, we were all in receipt of a uh, uh, several questions by a concerned citizen I'd ask that the parks department be prepared to kind of help walk through and answer some of those they are okay. very good any other requests Alderman Chevalier. Um, I'd like to just make sure, you know, in light of what John said, you know, about the damage to his yard, I mean, I just want to make sure we have a streamlined process for folks to have the complaints and to be able to bring their concern up and have it resolved quickly with, with these utility yep. companies. Okay. This is the first one that's come here. They've all been calling City Hall, and they all go to Dennis. So, yeah. Okay. Anything else? I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. I'll move, move to adjourn. Second. Second, Alderman Booth. All in favor, please say aye. 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 We stand adjourned.